there. Well, we're at the base of the garden in the backyard. And one of the things we have is an area that's highly overgrown. I gave the uh, tarragon a haircut. There's a lot of other junk in here. This is tarragon. It was starting to develop flowers, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it was really rather overgrown so that we couldn't get up the steps. And I think we're gonna save the black raspberries here for another dye bath. They're gonna get cut back. They've overgrown the path too. These are first year growths. So this is what's going to give me my crop next year of uh, black raspberries. And the tips need to actually hit the ground and start growing roots for the following year. So I think just along the edge here, we're gonna train some of these guys and cut them back just a little bit. We have quite an area that has black raspberries, so I'm not worried about um, trimming the ones on the edge here so that they're out of our path. And then the other thing that needs to be trimmed are the dead ones. That's where you get your bramble. And that has to be done with gloves. Those that have thorns that are very sharp and they embed themselves pretty good. So, yeah, I think we have some work cut out for us, but I think we'll get a good dye bath out of this. Uh, a couple of them. We'll get one with tarragon, that's what we're doing now, and then black raspberry later on when I trim these guys back. So let's see what a bucket of that looks like. Okay, so I have just a regular five gallon bucket and I fill it up with all my cuttings and chop them up a bit and added them to water to soak overnight. I'm gonna let those sit tonight. I can leave them for two or three days, but after that the water gets really skunky because of the heat. Um, it also tends to grow uh, mosquitoes, which we don't want. So typically leaving it overnight is fine. Um, probably need to top that off. I thought I put water in there. But sometimes what happens is the plant sucks up some of the water. So you think you have the bucket full and you don't really. So that'll get a little bit more water. I've got some rain water at the bottom of a drain pipe that I'm gonna toss on that. Um, I already checked the other source I get my water is my dehumidifier. And the dehumidifier is not full, even though it feels like it should be. So we're gonna grab the rain water that collected yesterday. Right, it's been two days. Yeah, I know, the magic of, of video. It's been two days. This is what it looks like. We're gonna get it into this pot and then over onto the camp stove to cook for about an hour. And then I've gotta chase off to work and we'll strain it after I get back. See how it goes. This is tarragon. Okay, I'm back from work and this has had a chance to cool down. This is what the tarragon looks like after it's been boiled for an hour. Um, the color it's going to give me is probably going to be in the tan to beige range, but we'll see what I get. Um, right now I'm going to strain it into this bucket using some old t-shirts and then I will uh, go select my yarns and start the actual dyeing process with the yarn. Okay, so we're going to do a sample. The batch yielded enough for um, two pots to be cooked and it gave me a lot of dye. So what we're going to do is we're going to sample. We're going to see what color we like the best before putting in the big volumes of yarn. And to do that what I have are, these are the 220 uh, warp twist skeins. And what I have is I have pre-mordented in copper. This is alum with a tin bloom, just a tiny pinch of tin. This is iron. And this is just plain alum. As you can tell, you can't really tell the difference too much between the alum and the alum bloom with tin. And then once these are dyed, quite often 
it's hard to tell the difference between these two once they pick up a die. So what I'm doing is I'm marking the two that look similar. And what I did was I took a um, shower hook and put it around one skein so I would know that that was um, iron or it was the tin, depending on which one I did it with. And then I cook them for about an hour and one of them has a piece of cotton tied around it so that I know and that one is actually the iron. These need to cook a little bit longer, but you can see I'm already getting some color from them. I had to have the van towed in between this, so um, AAA interrupted me pretty nicely. So we're going to start this up again, let it go for another half an hour and see what the colors are, rinse them out, and um, then we'll get the um, larger quantities, thicker wools and do a, a bigger pot. This is a small pot I picked up, uh, stainless steel at uh, Goodwill for 99 cents. So um, keeping my eye out for all different sizes and um, then we'll do larger skeins. But we'll only do them in the colors that we like because who needs 85 shades of tan? Okay. Take okay, care. here's an update on how my samples turned out. I can't help the neighbor's car but um this is the tin bloom this is alum this is iron and this is copper and i, I although the the tin is beautiful i'm kind of digging the copper so i don't know what i'm going to do yet we might do some of each depends on how much of this we get um a lot of the things I grow in my yard will give me the same range of colors. So I may try for the um, the bright yellow with the um, tin and then do um, something later on in the year with the copper. We'll see. Uh, it depends how fast things grow, how dry it gets this year. And uh, hurricane season impacts our weather horribly. So we never know whether it's gonna be feast or famine with water. Um, this time of year so um, we'll see what we get but I think we're gonna go with the tin this time hi there we're picking back up again I am mordanting some more skeins and I ran out of propane and the easiest way to control the temperature is to have a propane stove it's a little harder um, so I've got it on a, a light fire right now and what I'm doing is I, I'm going to cover this to keep the ashes out. All right. Um, you see I have my bucket handy just in case the fire gets away from me. Um, I'm mordanting this and I save my mordant so it doesn't really go down the drain at all. And this is how I label my... Um, mordants that I save and what I do is this is all done by weight so it involves a little bit of math um, if I have a pound of wool then I'm going to have 10% of it as alum and 3% of it as tin and then after I've used it I assume I don't test but I assume that the um, percentage has gone down by half so what I put in my container is assumed to be 5% alum and 1.5% by weight tin um, very toxic and I highly recommend you pick up the Mr. Yuck stickers but um, what I do then is I have to top it off and so but it saves me on the amount of chemicals I use so I had to weigh out and know what the weight of my yarn was to start with and then multiply that weight times 0 0.05 and measure out the alum and then again take that weight 
and multiply times 0 0.015 for the amount of stannous chloride that's in this. And then I also added, in this particular case, I just took a nice scoopful, I didn't really measure it so much, of cream of tartar to prevent um, damage to the fiber because tin is very hard on fiber and so is copper. So you always want to use cream of tartar with those unless you have a recipe that recommends not using them. Um, I always use those when I use tin or copper because they're very harsh on the fiber. And in this case, I'm also going with a low fire on this and I might go longer than an hour, but I'm not going to take it up to boiling. So time for me to add some more wood and then hopefully we can go on to dyeing this. And then again, when the, when the water from this is finished, I will strain it into my container and save it for the next time. Okay, this is just a quick tip here. Make sure that when you, uh, if you're going to save your mordants, regardless of what they are, that you do label them and that they're clearly marked, that they are not something to be used, especially if you reuse containers like I do. Um, but you also do not want to pour hot liquid into plastic containers. It will melt them. You also do not want to pour hot liquid into glass containers. It will crack them. So that's just a tip. Um, meanwhile... I've got the fire, I'm starting it up again, and the first batch is done. I did this in two batches, and what I ended up with is the bright yellow. And this is the sock yarn. Um, on my monitor, it's showing up as slightly paler or more mustard-like. Um, this is wet. It still needs to get washed and when it's wet it also shows up brighter than it, it will when it is a finer product. So um, that's the first one. This is a sock yarn. It's a super wash. Um, super wash has been peroxided so it will be brighter than the um, merino, um, organic merino. So um, we'll see what we get with the organic. Okay, I want you to see this, because this doesn't happen often. We're going to zoom in here. This is a tarragon now. Um, this one here is a superwash. Usually, superwash will pick up way more color because it's been stripped. It's like when you dye your hair, it's been stripped of color, and it tends to pick up more color afterwards. But no, look at this. This is the organic... Gaia yarn. It's 100% merino, fine merino. It picked up the same exact shade of tarragon. Oh, that's really exciting. So, um, the uh, this one here is already available in the Etsy shop. Um, these were waiting to get a full slate of those before doing a shop update of all of them at once. So, um, have fun dyeing. I hope you take this up as a hobby. It is a great thing to do. Make your own color. Okay, here's the official legal disclaimer. Always wear gloves when working with chemicals. Read the manufacturer's directions for using any product, especially mordants, and be safe while you're dying.